All right, good morning, everyone. How's it going? Um, welcome to July, goodness, July 20th. Okay, so the year is going by very quickly. Um, I've only got one little item to discuss or demo actually um, on our agenda today. Um, I've been working on trying to figure out ways to help prevent auto deploys from being blocked in the case that a cluster is down for maintenance, whether that be planned or unplanned. Um, if it is a planned maintenance, we could certainly uh, perform what I'm about to demo ahead of time. If it's unplanned, obviously we're probably suffering some major incident and you know we could perform this same style of remediation at that moment in time. Um, but I would imagine the auto deploys would probably be blocked regardless because of other situations. But in the case of uh, potentially trying to avoid auto deploys being blocked, I would like to demo or showcase how we could potentially avoid uh, such cat catastrophic events. Um, normally this all happens via CI. Um, I'm gonna replicate effectively what CI does locally. Um, so if I go into our favorite repo, okay, I don't care. So this is the repository that we use to perform auto deploys. Um, when a CI job wants to perform a deploy, it simply runs K control upgrade. So our dip jobs, for example, this is going to be targeting our pre-cluster. Um, our deployments contain two stages where the first one is a dry run, but they all do the upgrade command. So if we do a dry run real quick, we'll see hopefully that there are no changes in pre prod. Um, there's nothing exciting in the dip that I have for this cluster, so we shouldn't see any changes. Come on. There are more things that happen inside of CI, such as being able to pull the key that's used and then authenticate, but all that happens is a step prior to us actually running K control inside of CI. We have some hidden text on my screen because of my color choices in my shell. So now, uh, assuming this is an auto deploy, you know, the next step will be to run this precise command, which will actually perform the upgrade, being that we don't have any changes here. Um, I'm not going to run this command because it's quite you quite useless. Um, now, if we are undergoing maintenance, um, I plan on creating a run book uh, that does this. I'm that's a work in progress at the moment. But effectively, what we do is just do cluster. Whoops, cluster skip equals, and the name of the cluster in this case pre uh, is the name of the environment. Uh, Helm file uses the environment names to distinguish all of our clusters. So pre is equal to pre, whereas production is equal to the actual names of the clusters. So instead of grpd here, we would do grpd hyphen us hyphen east one hyphen b, for example. Um, but this does the exact same thing, except it adds a little notification saying, hey, we're skipping this cluster because you told me to. Um, and we're going to exit cleanly. So if I do echo that, we'll see that the exit code is zero. The reason we are exiting cleanly is because we are targeting specific clusters for upgrades. Uh, during auto deploys, we deploy to our regional cluster and cluster B at the same time, and then we deploy to cluster C and cluster D at the same time. If I were to skip cluster B and with an exit code of one, that job will fail. So clusters C and D will never get deployed to, for example. Um, so I've made the exit code customizable if I hop into this script real quick. Um, whoops, and K okay, control, fine. I did make this customizable, just defaulting it to a value of zero for, so for whatever reason, if we do need to customize this and force ourselves to exit uncleanly, which will force all deploy to act a little goofily, uh, we could force that change if necessary. Um, 
So I guess there's two follow-up items that I'm currently working on. One is the fact that this exits cleanly. So, you know, there's the chance that if someone leaves this variable hanging around and then leave a cluster inside of that variable configuration, we might accidentally skip deploying to a cluster without actually realizing it. So to solve that problem, I'm going to try to figure out if there's a way that we could parse the version of what GitLab version is running via metrics and create an alert for it. Um, I know we have this information on our omnibus installation. So like all of our Gitly nodes are exposing which version of GitLab is installed, but I don't think our clusters are, at least I can't quickly find it. So I'm going to try to figure out um, where that could come from and see what we could do to, do to add an alert. And then maybe because our CIE jobs, I think the timeout is 60 minutes or it might be two hours. I can't remember all the time I had. I'll create an alert that um, takes that into account such that if we do have a legitimate failure of some kind that we're not unnecessarily alerting us, but rather it'll be a very fine-tuned alert instead. Um, and lastly would be uh, improvements to our run books uh, such that we have the actual procedure that I propose that's necessary. Um, I did document a procedure um, very quickly on the issue that I'm using to define what we want to accomplish here. Um, uh, I'll just share my screen really quickly. Um, so I'm effectively going to be documenting this, but in a nicer format inside of a runbook where the first step is to identify a cluster and, you know, I, on my shell here, I locally tested pre-prod, but we would input the CR variable. I did on the command line, but obviously we would use our CI variables for the op project. Um, and then we would have the necessary need to notify the release managers and the UC of set upcoming maintenance. And then we could then proceed to the set server state script, which is these are the modifications that did prior to me being on vacation in June, uh, where we slowly ramp down the traffic, go into the target cluster that we are targeting for maintenance. Then we could use our metrics to confirm that a cluster is no longer receiving um, any sort of traffic at all. Uh, we'll probably see some requests, like some RPS values never going to be zero because we always have health checks and we always have metrics uh, being gathered. Um, but minimally, it should be, you know, less than 2 million requests per second, for example. You know, I think that'd be a good way to check for that. You know, we could probably script that out. Then we perform whatever maintenance we want to choose. So, you know, coming soon, I guess, I'll be taking one of the staging clusters down just to, you know, test that all of this is working properly, that we have a solid run book and that we've got the necessary, um, uh, how do you, what do you, what's the, uh, the alerts, uh, making sure we silence the appropriate alerting. That way, when we are performing normal maintenance, we're not unnecessarily paging the EOCs. Um, and then afterwards, if necessary, bring the cluster to parity. So if by chance we had a deployment occur while a cluster was down, we want to make sure that cluster is uh, running the correct version of anything prior to it taking traffic again. That way we're not accidentally downgrading our services and inducing an outage because of that type of situation. Um, need to figure out how to do that. Um, I've got ideas. Currently, my thought here is that we would simply replay a deploy job that was previously skipped, you know, we would remove that variable, replay the job, it brings the cluster back into parity. Uh, after confirmation that all is good, we could then uh, run the set service so can bring traffic back online. Um, and then we're effectively complete. So that's what I'm working on. And that's my demo for the day. Uh, does anyone have any questions related to uh, this particular item at all? Cool. Well, short agenda. Does anyone else have anything they want to chat about? Um, I was thinking we could have chatted about the OKRs, but I think it's, we still miss Akmar and so on. I think it's something that we should keep doing in the issue. Um, and then most case scenario, we, we can pull it up in a different session. Um, how about this? Uh, if we have more discussion items on the issue, maybe we can bring something to next week's agenda, if you'd like. Yeah, sounds good. I'll be, uh, so hopefully we get some more comments in the next hours and 
let's do that. Sounds good. Cool. All right. Unless there's anything else, we'll call it the day. That was a short meeting. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day.